once again to Energy Central's Power Perspectives podcast. On this podcast, we strive to bring you timely and unique insights from the movers and shakers across the utility industry. We do that by featuring the heavy hitters and newsmakers of the energy sector. And today will be no different. I'm your host, Jason Price of West Monroe, coming to you from New York City. And joining me once again from Orlando, Florida, is Energy Central's community manager and podcast producer, Matt Chester. Matt, how are you feeling about today's episode? Hey, Jason. You know, I've got my coffee ready and I'm excited to just sit back and listen to a good one today. Agreed. We're dipping back into the hot topic today, and that's how the power sector is going to react and prepare to the coming electrification of transportation. While penetration of new EVs on the road has been slower in the United States than some other countries, it looks like we're poised to hit an inflection point shortly. From federal funding and policy support to an increasing number of more affordable models of electric vehicles, it's no wonder that 28% of Americans surveyed have said their next car will be electric. This transition will become even more dramatic in transportation fleets, where the business case of switching from gasoline or diesel to electric are driving fleet owners to adopt electric at accelerating rates. While that trend is a positive one for those pushing the electrification of transportation, fleets transitioning to electric will be a greater and more immediate challenge for the utilities and grid operators to face because of the greater absolute power demand increases that'll come with. Addressing this transition is key to utility leaders today. And to help them think through the problem, we have on today's episode a respected leader in the space. Kevin Hernandez is a partner at Scott Madden, where he co-leads their grid edge community practice. Specifically in his 10 years of service at Scott Madden, Kevin has spent plenty of time assisting energy industry clients think through the challenges associated with grid transformation, energy storage, and most importantly, transportation electrification. Kevin has spent a lot of time working through the challenges that will hit utilities and the grid when the transportation sector makes its dramatic transition, including key questions that we'll cover in today's conversation. Before we bring Kevin to the podcast booth, we do want to thank Scott Madden for their role in making today's episode possible. Scott Madden is a management consulting firm serving clients across the energy utility ecosystem. Areas of focus include transmission and distribution, the grid edge generation, energy markets, rates and regulations, corporate sustainability, and corporate services. The firm helps clients develop and implement strategies, improve critical operations, reorganize departments and entire companies, and implement myriad initiatives. So with that, let's bring in our guest, Kevin Hernandez, welcome to today's episode of Energy Central Power Perspectives Podcast. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. Kevin, you contend that the transition to electric transportation represents a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for utilities. Not a challenge, but an opportunity. Can you start by talking a bit about that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. And, and let me be clear, there's no doubt that the transition to electric transportation will present challenges, right? And I think... Those have been pretty frequently discussed and, and talked about. But I think what we don't often talk about enough is the opportunity that electric transportation presents. And you know, in our view, it's really a once-in-a-lifetime or once-in-a-generation opportunity. The infrastructure, the charging infrastructure that is going to be required to build out to, to meet EV charging needs is going to be significant. And it really represents this really unique opportunity for utilities to do what they do best, which is to serve customer load and add to rate base in really a truly meaningful way, particularly when you look at lots of parts of the country where declining load growth has been a persistent challenge. You know, this really represents something, an opportunity that, that in our view, utilities should seize upon to really do what they do best, and that's to deliver service to their customers. I also think it's a really interesting way, and in, particularly on the personal vehicle side, the residential customers, to reconnect with customers. I think EV charging and EV load is going to be really different. And so to the degree that utilities can help their customers manage their energy use, particularly when that energy use now is going to be much more dynamic, occurring in some, you know, in some cases away from the home, I think that's going to give them an opportunity to connect and reconnect with those customers in a much different way. If the opportunity is there, would you say that the utilities are doing what they can and should to keep pace with the rate of change in transportation? Well, you know, there's no doubt that the, the pace of change is just off the charts, right? And every seems like every day we're seeing a new EV model introduced or every day another announcement. I think it just, just this week we saw Ford 
announced an $11 billion, uh, billion with a B, investment in battery manufacturing, vehicle manufacturing for electric vehicles. So the industry is really, uh, I think the writing is on the wall. And we've said for a long time, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I think the when is really becoming quite soon. And the question about whether utilities are, are doing enough, you know, I think that they oftentimes don't get enough credit for all the things that they're doing. You know, we often hear these stories about the slow interconnection processes or the fleets are ordering vehicles and they, the vehicles arrive, but then the utilities are not able to charge those vehicles. But we lose track of all the stuff that's going on. Those things happen because, you know, the transportation industry is just coming up to speed. They really don't understand charging as much, you know, the infrastructure of the grid. So there's a lot happening in lots of parts of the country, lots of pilot programs, lots of development that's happening, a lot of really forward-thinking utilities. I just don't think we talk often enough just about all those types of things that are happening. It's my understanding that it can take up to two years in some instances for even a local distribution grid to update their equipment to suit EV charging. What might happen if the power sector lags too far behind where the EV industry is and needs? Yeah, that's a great question. So we, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the opportunity, but you know, the real risk is that transportation simply moves beyond utilities and invests in their own solutions, whether that's behind the meter, storage, DERs, you know, whatever they perceive that they need to do to reduce costs and speed up the, their timelines, their electrification timelines, and otherwise meet you know, what their charging needs. Right? So if the timelines that transportation and fleets are on are not in sync with the timelines that the grid and the utilities are going to be on, we're going to see a mismatch between those two. The risk to utilities is that those DERs and those storage and those other solutions are going to be put in. And the work that utilities are going to have to do to interconnect those assets and, and to manage the grid and everything else won't be any less than it will be to build out the infrastructure needed to serve that load to begin with. The only difference is that you know, the ownership of those assets might change. You know, that rate base opportunity, the opportunity to make those investments on behalf of the utilities customers could, be, could go in the other way. That could be things that are then made by fleets instead. You know, and I think that that's the risk there that you're, you're kind of losing a little bit of the opportunity and also the opportunity to manage the grid and build out the grid in a way that balances the need for EV charging, but also balances the, the grid needs. So, Kevin, uh, do you think the utilities have a role to play in for the individual customers, whether it's educating them or incentivizing them or with what you're talking about, how they, they can harden the, the distribution grid? Do they need to be reassuring customers that the utility and its infrastructure are going to be ready if they decide to take the, uh, the EV leap? Yeah, I think that there's certainly a role. And I think it's going to be really, you know, I think it is debated you know, quite a bit exactly what the role is of the utility. There's a lot of advocates. see so utility outreach and education efforts is you know, being a little self-serving, right? But at the same time, we talked about you know, risk. Another risk is overbuilding you know, the grid or, or, or overestimating charging needs. And so I think utilities have an opportunity to educate the transportation industry, educate customers who will be switching to electric vehicles about how to manage their load, how to go about that transition in a way that results in grid upgrades that are needed, but not over needed, not overbuilt, you know, that leads to electrification in a, in a, in a common sense, a pragmatic way, rather than, hey, we need multi-megawatts of load serving capacity here when you know that may not be the case. So I think utilities really do have a big role to play. And the advantage of them getting in early, if utilities taking you know really early steps in doing this, is that they can get out in front of this and rather wait for a, an uneducated or a, a customer who may not be familiar with the way the, the electric industry works to come to the utility and say, I need X amount of load. They can actually go out proactively and say, hey, Let's work on this together. Let's figure out together exactly what kind of load you might need. And then we can, we can talk about how much it would cost and how long it'll take to do that. And then they create the dynamic where the customer and the utility can have conversations and say, well, what if we do this different? Or what if we build this different? What if we select this type of charging or move charging in, the, in a way that, that manages those grid impacts? It speeds up interconnection. It lowers the cost and lowers the number of upgrades that might be necessary, which is in the best interest, right, of the fleets, lowers their costs, obviously, but also it lowers the cost for the utilities customers who are going to bear some part of that infrastructure cost as well. Yeah, Kevin, I want to pivot more towards the electric fleet transition. So share with us some specific considerations 
we always describe that utilities should be looking at really to help motivate major commercial fleets to start transitioning to this area. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is just taking out is helping to fill the knowledge gap. Attend a lot of, as I'm sure many of the listeners do, attend a lot of industry events. And it's, it's interesting when I attend transportation industry events, there's lots of conversation about charging infrastructure, but usually very few utility representatives there to talk about the realities of, of the grid. And the same is true for the utility space. When I attend utility conferences, oftentimes there's lots of talk about the infrastructure, but few transportation industry representatives to talk about the needs of transportation fleets. So I think, you know, any steps that can be taken to bridge those gaps and to, to start building that, that knowledge, you know, I th- think that, you know, when we look back, you know, I, I can't help but thinking that, you know, transportation is going to become a new customer class. We're going to have residential customers or traditional CNI customers, and then we're going to have transportation customers. And the reason that might be different than CNI is because one, you're talking about, you know, quite large loads, similar to CNI. But also just a bunch of much more dynamic charging environment and much more the interplay between how the energy is used and provided is going to be a, a much more collaborative in the sense that utilities and their customers can work together to manage the impacts on the grid. So I think utilities getting involved early and and providing filling in some of that gap, which is a really key component of any kind of program. Right, right. But it's not just the utilities. I mean, they need the cooperation from the regulators. So Could you share with us your thoughts on what role does regulation play in this whole story? This is a a challenging part of this is that, you know, the current regulatory models, I think, do a very good job at matching uh, the needs of customers with the utility's ability to provide to serve that load, but also do that in a way that's, that's responsible in terms of costs and not putting too many costs onto, onto customers. You know, that works pretty good, right, with traditional loads coming on or new customers or kind of new interconnections. But I think where it may not work as well when you talk about these very, very large loads that might be coming on when we talk about fleet electrification. And so kind of maybe even just taking a step back when we talk about fleets and why that might be different is that, you know, we're expecting that we're going to see a lot of medium duty and regional fleets convert to electric vehicles fairly quickly. That's the use case that provides the best financial benefit, but best operational benefit. And when you have that kind of that kind of local delivery or regional transportation model, oftentimes those fleets are returning. In fact, most of the time they're returning back to a depot or to a, a garage, some sort of facility at night for charging. Of course, what that does is it concentrates that charging load, right? For residential customers, they go home each night and charge. That's going to be a lot less strain on the grid than when you see. 50 or 100 or 150 uh, vehicles all returning and trying to charge in the same window in the evening. So you're going to have these very large loads. And then potentially, you know, those loads are going to happen very quickly. As soon as we see transportation industries, you know, the vehicle availability is going up. The financial benefits are well known. The operational benefits are well known. And so we're, as soon as there's, we envision a tipping point where fleets are going to say, okay, we're ready to pull the trigger on this, we're ready to electrify, let's put our order on these vehicles, and they're used to dealing with ordering vehicles and managing vehicle fleets, so let's order those electric vehicles. And then they're going to turn to the utility and say, okay, well, you know, we have this two years or, you know, whatever it is, lag time. So how do we meet the that gap? How do we fill that gap between pre-building infrastructure, or getting infrastructure on the ground in order to meet this coming demand before the demand is absolutely certain? Current regulatory model really just doesn't you know, doesn't, for obvious reasons, doesn't do that. So we're going to have to ask ourselves the question, how do we go from a just-in-time model of, of meeting load to one that's really, really looking ahead and is load leading? You know, how do we lead load in terms of building out infrastructure? I heard recently that the utilities view their future customer as the automobile, which is completely different than their traditional role of serving the the residential and commercial customer. Uh, I think it's an interesting twist in terms of looking at their future load really being four wheels and a battery. Are the utilities positioned properly to manage and think through this? Are they on the right path to suitably fill that role? I think they are. And I think that, that, you know, even thinking about it from that perspective is really pretty interesting. You know, and I think that that really highlights one of the one of the reasons that 
transportation, whether those are commercial fleets or, or even personal vehicles, are going to be different. Right? They're going to be a lot different than traditional load, both in terms of, of just the, you know, when they're charging and how they're charging and where they're charging. But it's just the, the locational aspect of that. You know, you'll be able to, in some cases, you might see, you know, vehicles charging in one jurisdiction and even discharging in the future in another when we talk about V2G or V2 building applications. And so thinking through how energy has been produced and delivered and consumed in the past and how that will be in the future, I think, is at the, at the heart of um, why we think EVs are going to be different. Fantastic. It certainly seems that the utilities are dragging their feet in certain areas, but their work is cut out for them. Now, though, it's time for a lightning round. We're going to throw at a handful of questions that gives our audience a peek at who you are. You'll have one question or phrase to respond. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Who is your childhood hero? Easy. My dad. Uh, my dad was an engineer at Tennessee Valley Authority for 35 years, and so he's always been my hero. If you won the lottery, what's your first frivolous purchase? I'd have to say that I'd, I'd go back to my Navy roots and, and buy a boat, for sure. What's your go-to movie snack? Peanut M&M's. What's the best way to spend a Sunday afternoon? You know, if I can talk the kids into going out and playing a few holes of golf with me, that's about as good as it can get. <laughs> And what are you most optimistic about? I think, you know, we've done this before. The, the industry, the electric industry has done this before. We've electrified the nation. We've regularly responded to whether it's extreme weather events or other challenges. This is a challenge. Electrification of transportation is a challenge. I have no doubt that the industry will meet this challenge head on. Well stated. Kevin, you've perfectly navigated the lightning round. For doing so, we grant you the final word. So what's the lasting message you hope the utility audience listening in today takes away from this conversation? Yeah, thanks. You know, I think I'd go back to where we started the conversation. I, I think the writing is on the wall that this transition to electric vehicles, both with commercial electric vehicles and personal EVs, it's well underway. It's not an if, certainly not an if. And the win is going to be a lot sooner than we think. I think that's going to present some of those you know, very real challenges for utilities, and there's just no doubt. But I think I want to emphasize that, you know, for forward-looking utilities, this is going to be a real opportunity. And I think it's going to be one of those opportunities that just doesn't come around very often, or certainly not often enough. And that opportunity is to grow the business, to grow the utility business at a time where that's really hard to do in a lot of places. You know, on the commercial side, you know, the transition to electric fleets I think it's important for utility leaders to view that, particularly in, in some areas and for some duty cycles, as a transition is going to happen probably a lot more quickly than we realize. I think it's going to seem very slow until we start to see some real action on the, on the fleet side, and then it's going to happen all at once. It's going to be very quick. That can really, from a, a load-serving perspective, look like materialization of new load just really you know, almost overnight. And so being prepared and ready for that ahead of time is going to be paramount. Fleets are already beginning to build the business case for electric vehicles, particularly for those light and medium duty delivery vehicles. And how that all is going to manifest is this convergence. And I think this is a fascinating topic, this convergence of the transportation industry, the electric industry, and really also you know, just technology, right? Technology as an enabler for, for all of these things. So you really see those three things coming together and creating this dynamic moment we're all facing now of change. And this change is going to require everyone to have a seat at the table, whether it's the, the end users, you know, the, in, uh, the EV users and fleet users who are going to be using energy in a much different way than they've used it in the past uh, when it was liquid-based. It's going to require utilities to think about how their customers are going to change, how their customers' needs are going to change, whether those are, again, residential or commercial. And it's going to require regulators and other authorities to sit down and say, hey, do our frameworks, do our models work for this? Are we serving customers in the best way here? We didn't talk about it earlier on, but you know, another question to be asking is how disadvantaged communities are affected by this. You know, what are the societal benefits of electrification? How do we balance those things against the costs? So I think there's a lot of interesting questions, a lot of facets to this that go beyond just the technical that I think just makes it really exciting, but also you know, just a really interesting time. Yeah, that's terrific insight. 
Kevin, we really appreciate you stopping by to educate us and talk us through some of these critical topics. So I'd certainly be curious, I don't know about you, Matt, but I'd certainly be curious to have you come back, Kevin, and join us again a year from now and check in and see where we've, uh, how far we've gone. Until then, thank you again for joining us today, Kevin. Much appreciated. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. You can always reach Kevin through the Energy Central platform where he welcomes your questions and comments. And on behalf of the entire Energy Central team, thanks to everyone for listening today. Once again, I'm Jason Price. And the most relevant conversation of the utility industry today are happening in the Energy Central community. So we look forward to you joining us and sharing your insight at energycentral.com. And we'll see you next time on the Energy Central Power Perspectives Podcast.